I continue to review the X um, refresh lineup of motherboard Gigabyte has released in the honor of the brand new 14th generation of Intel Core processor, one of which is right on top of me right there. And um, last week I had reviewed the excellent Z790 Aorus Elite X, the very first, you know, entry point of that new lineup, which by the way was absolutely great and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. And it comes to sense, to full logic, that I would continue with its Pro X, especially interesting when you know that there was no Z790 Aorus Pro released last year and I was very surprised about that. No, instead this is truly a brand new motherboard introduced in the Z790 uh, Aorus powered motherboard. Now, Fun fact for you, I have not had a natural occurring erection since 2009. Situation which much improved as soon as I started to uh, support my favorite YouTube channel, so... The Pro X comes to us with an unsurprisingly solid and premium 8-layered ATX PCB, which will ensure a higher production cost, but in exchange provides a near perfect PCI signal installation and a better VRM heat dissipation. Fundamentals which does uh, translate in a more stable and more lasting product. Now, design-wise, this Pro X came dressed in white, a first in my decade long of reviewing these motherboards. And even though I did not fall in love with it, I need to admit a certain aesthetic appeal. The PCB has a very singular gray hue to it, which contrasts nicely with more white cooling components. Talking of which, ours shows off its premium finish abilities, both in cut and in the aluminum sand brushing. RGB wise, we do have a rather nice looking and bright ours logo shining its way to us. It looks defined and the light homogeneously fill each letter, exactly how an RGB premium should look like. In addition, and if this was not enough, we got our four fusion enabled RGB connectors, three of which are addressable. CPU socket wise, well, for the third and last year, we have our LGA 1700, which did introduce DDR5 and the PCA 5.0 standard to those boards. It supports the 12th, 13th and 14th generation of Intel Core CPUs, making this CPU socket the very first one to support more than two consecutive Intel processors. Breathe, Laurent, breathe. VRM wise, well, our Pro X brings a slight upgrade incentive when compared to its cheaper Elite X, adding one parallel phase, meaning 21, 90 and 60 amps menu of power stages organized in a 9 plus 2 plus 1 phases. That is 1620 CPU centering amps to not only operate but also somewhat and sometimes severely overclock any of the past three generation of Intel Core processors. But despite being a very good premium solution, I can't help feeling that the Pro is much closer to the Elite X than the more expensive Master X, which it was supposed to breach, and, and, and something which will fundamentally penalize uh, uh, the Pro X, in my opinion. Cooling-wise, again, apart from the white dressing, we are in the exact same configuration seen on its cheaper Elite X. The main block remains this very good-looking massive monolith, still funded on that spreaded wall supporting a wide, large radiating plate. The side block is this denser piece of aluminum spreading on its sides to exhale hit away. Both do show the very same large double contact design with this much better quality thermal pads we've seen on the refresh lineup to provide an improved intimate heat relief to both power stages and chokes alike. Temperature results are unsurprisingly good with a 5.9 GHz clocked i9-14900K and an hour-long synthetic stress test, our VRM block stayed at an impressively low 50 degrees Celsius at all time. Therefore, I would do keep uh, this VRM grading anywhere between A- minus and A. It's not quite an A, but a little bit higher than A- minus in my opinion, and the, would not uh, couple it with anything else than an i7 uh, K class overall, and I think you guessed it. I do feel that the Pro X VRM configuration is very good, obviously, but only comforts the Z790 Elite 
X value, which proposes an almost identical power solution for a much lower cost. And unfortunately, same story RAM wise. We still have a 192 GB DDR5 RAM support organized in a dual channel configuration and able to clock up to an unprecedented 8266 MHz. It's worth noting that 8 GHz RAM clock will be a rare event and will probably be sustainable on a single stick, but I can foresee close to 7 GHz clocks on a fully populated board, which will have a large production impact. But again, this is yet another incentive for the Z790 Elite X, which proposed the identical memory solution. Staying in the memory, we do have five M.2 solid state drive connectors. And on the plus side, we also have a PCI 5.0 enabled. And that is a sizable upgrade when compared to the Elite X. And as such, it has received the bulk of the cooling attention here with a double-sided thermal pad treatment and a rather tall, very tall and premium heat sink. But if you squint your eyes close enough to the small prints of the motherboard, then you do realize that if you dare using it at all, it will trigger a PCIe bifurcation robbing your GPU export slot half of its PCIe lanes. And to be fair, up to the 4090 and the 4090 Super, if there is one, this will not translate into any kind of performances change. There will not be any kind of bottlenecking, but it does rob um, this motherboard from all the PCIe 5.0 future proofing it's supposed to bring in and that is really annoying and to keep things even more fair because i am i am kind of a fair guy uh it's not so much a motherboard issue more maybe a, a, a intel chipset and processor problem because there's simply not enough pca 5.0 lanes only 16 of them in total in the 13th and 14th generation of intel core processor so yeah now the remaining four pca 4 enabled connectors do not have that problem and share a rather good quality and thick thermal padded heat plate obviously i would not risk using all of them in the same time like in a red configuration unless you leave some connectors blank to avoid some obvious thermal bleeding. Now, I do love the screwless latch system Aris has introduced on its new X-Series, which allows an unprecedented ease in removing and placing back the different storage cooling elements. Finally, another small mention to the M.2 solid state drive screwless connectors, which remain robust and painless to use. And logically, export-wise, we still have our 316 slots with different speeds. Only the CPU connected one manages to get 16 lanes at a very fast and future proofing PCIe 5.0 standard for a 64 gigabyte per second data swap in each direction. And this is obviously where you want your GPU installed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Now, I am disappointed not to see any PCIe extended opening mechanism as seen on the master series. And I do think that this would have been a very inexpensive way to add some premium to this motherboard and more importantly, help us in you know our gp removal adventures the other two 16 slots run at four speeds pca4 and pca3 standard sensibly less than seen on the cheaper elite x obviously explained by all those m.2 solid state drive connectors to start with overall an acceptable mix of uh you know pca exports I would say, if it was not for this obscene PCIe bifurcation we saw earlier, which will totally rob the PCIe 5.0 incentive of this board. Shameful, absolutely shameful. <sighs> now, back IO-wise, well, things are again very familiar. We have our integrated back IO, fully expected, and starting from the left, we have a couple of legacy second generation plugs, four 5 gig plugs, four 3.2 generation plugs, including a dual channel type C, which can go up to 20 gigabit per second, three display plugs for integrated graphics, including one of our USB type C, which doubles as an integrated graphic output. But most importantly, we do have the introduction of our Wi-Fi 7, which is now standard on all newly released motherboards and which can broadcast on a much lower 320 megahertz radio spectrum and with a compatible wi-fi 7 router can transmit data at a blazing fast 50 gigabit per second with an extremely low latency almost fiber optic uh, level of latency and that i'm really excited about. Next, we have our upgraded 5GBE LAN with speed modulation, which is a little premium bump compared to its Elite X sibling. And finally, 
the good old but premium nevertheless ALC 1220VB codec from Realtek, serviced by 500 microfarads worth of capacitors, which is great in terms of, you know, integrated audio solution. But I do mourn our four Wema film capacitors, which were here for interference suppression, present on the cheaper Elite X, which really made sure to bring a good audio solution to Excellency, and I really don't understand how Gigabyte thought it would be all right to remove uh, f from the Pro, which is supposedly a more premium, you know, expensive product, a feature which is there on the cheaper version of it, the Elite X, which is like almost $100 cheaper. That I don't get. It, it's a great audio solution, but just not as good as on the Elite X by a mile. Now, chipset wise, well, we are powered by the aging 6 watts, 48 gigabyte per second Z790 chipset, which is in its second year of service and starts to seriously show its limitations since it is missing the native PCA 5.0 lanes to supplement the ones available on the processor and avoid difficult bandwidth choices as we've seen over and over again on this motherboard. Now, the good news is that on the front panel connector wise, we got a little more than we usually do, which is rather nice surprise. In addition of the usual dual legacy connectors and the five gigs front panel connectors, we also have a dual channel type C with speeds up to 20 gigabit per second, a Thunderbolt 4 card connector for serious bandwidth upgrade possibilities, and that's a first for me, a front panel type C display port, which is here to feed a sensor panel, which you know what, is not that bad. I kind of like the idea of having this nice big LCD screen, you know, glued into my uh, 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 chassis and telling me all those BIOS sensitive information. I'm not being sarcastic. I, I think that's actually something, you know, Gigabyte uh, you know, got, might got right on this one. So yeah, first kudos of this review. What do you know? Cooling wise, well, we also have a few things to talk about as well. We don't only have everything to sustain a healthy air cooled build, but we also have two dedicated D5 water pump connectors and a Tempsensa connector to support quite a complex custom water cooling solution if you wish so. And another uh, noticeable upgrade when looking at the Elite X. So not that bad, but I will notice the presence of a noise sensor, which in my opinion is the most useless feature ever introduced in a motherboard, a noise sensor. Uh, what? Finally, troubleshooting wise, <laughs> we really don't have much going on here. We do have the usual easy debugger to point us in the right direction in case of trouble, kinda, uh, a reset switch and a flashback button for a CPU less bias update, vital in my opinion. But we no longer have the handy clear CMOS button we used to have on the Elite X, instead a jumper. Right, yeah, that, that was a great upgrade. And by the way, no QR code screen, which at that price range, 400 bucks, yeah, we should have one. No discussion. I don't care if it's a pro or not. at that price range, we should have a QR code screen. So, Gigabyte, if you're listening, please. Now, in conclusion, the Z790 Aros Pro X will cost you close to 400 bucks without taxes, which is about 80 to 100 dollars more than its Elite X version, which is rather problematic. Uh, it is a great board in many respects, but despite the slight VRM bump and a more noticeable presence of a PCIe 5.0 M.2 solid state drive connector, the differences between the Elite and the Pro X are way too small to warrant a 100 or even an 80 bucks premium. And even worse, in terms of production or gaming performances, the Elite X will give you every single frame per second or percentile, it, it, it is the same, it is the same. I don't know how else to say it. Those are two identical motherboards in terms of abilities, of build quality. The only thing which differentiate them, and notice that I'm talking to you blind because without my glasses I see nothing, is the fact that the Pro X is white. I, the old strategy of placing the Pro X by gigabyte is a white dressing. And when you understand that, 
you knew they had nothing else to go for or with. And they just wanted to reintroduce the Pro to get people like me who really loved what they've done with the Pro series in the past few years excited. In short, um, if you want a really good motherboard who can do what the Pro X can do, I'd save yourself a solid hundred dollars and just jump down to the Z790 uh, Elite X, which is where your money wants to be.